Okay, <clears throat> so I think I've got this figured out how to prop it up so I don't have to hold it so it doesn't jiggle as much, I hope. So, listen, I was listening to Michael from Greece. I love Michael from Greece. Uh, do you guys feel that energy from him? Doesn't it feel like just like the biggest, softest, warmest, most gentle hug? Oh, it just feels awesome to me. Hopefully you can feel it too. I know I do. But anyway, I was talking to him, talking about the struggle that he's had being gay or coming, dealing with all the issues around being gay. And I thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit about this because it's kind of a, it's not an important uh, part of the story for you to necessarily know and understand, but I just think it's really fascinating and uh, of, of how that worked. Because although gay people have been around forever and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, uh, certainly from my perspective, I think there's several things that have always confused me about this place that I didn't understand why they confused me. Things like uh, race issues and uh, bigotry of any kind against anyone for any reason, male, female, color of your skin, how much money you've got, how much education you've got, what car you drive, sexuality, religion, it just uh, has amazed me. Now, now I understand that it was all done to get the experience down to the third dimensional level. But at the time I didn't, growing up, I didn't understand that. So all I saw was all of these people judging each other and I didn't understand it. To me, it made no sense to not like somebody because of their skin color, because I looked at everybody's skin and nobody's skin was the same anyway. Um, White people are not all white. I'm freckled, so I'm actually, I'm very freckled. So I'm actually half and half. So, but when you look at people's skin, I mean, really look at it, nobody's skin is even remotely the same color. So how does this, this blanket grouping of peoples, especially now, because there's been so much worldwide travel and intermarriage and, and genetics are really you know, all mixed up, and this has been going on for, for such a long time. So I really, that whole race thing really threw me because I was born in Laramie, Wyoming, and we just didn't, we didn't have racial issues. It was um, up further north in the central United States. We just didn't. I don't, nobody was ever treated differently Um around the race thing it was definitely much more and we had mexicans our most likely was uh, mexicans and they came up to work in the fields in the beet factories and such and uh they would save every dime they've got and send it to their families and they were the nice we uh, they were they were seasonal so i didn't get to know them as much as i would like but i went to school with the, the kids and uh, they were just the hardest working, nicest people. and But nobody said anything or I wasn't raised that they were different than we were. Um, uh, and the black people that I was around, um, probably the biggest thing that I was raised with was a prejudice uh, about uh, Native Americans. Uh, that's where the big battle was there because I was further north. So my family historically came over to Wyoming and uh, basically stole the land from the Indians, is what my family did. We had nothing to do with slavery or not. We came over from Germany and uh, went north, northeast, and then came over to Wyoming. Had nothing whatsoever to do with slavery at all. But we did, so I don't have any guilt about that. <laughs> but we did suck at, <laughs> at stealing land from the Indians and fighting them. Well, it was battling. It was, we did, my family did the same thing that the, the different tribes of Indians were doing at the time. So, um, yeah, there wasn't a big push until much later where the federal government was involved. As a matter of fact, my great, 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 some great, great, great grandmother, there's still a place up in Wyoming where there's a creek and it's named uh, Crazy Woman Creek. And that was named after my relative. And what happened was, <laughs> was she was left at home at the, the ranch house with a bunch of horses that my family had caught. And they were in a corral. 
and a band of Indians came by, and she was there alone. Thank goodness she had her horse tied by the back door. And the band of Indians came to steal the horses. And so they took the horses, and she went, because she knew, my family's tough. It always has been tough, and it was tough back then, too. And she knew she would be in a really bad trouble if she lost those horses. So she grabbed her horse by herself and went screaming, I mean, literally screaming, mouth screaming, crazily after the Indians. And it scared them so bad because she, she looked crazy that they left the horses and ran off. And then they named that area right there where that creek is, where the house was close to, Crazy Woman Creek, and the Indians wouldn't come back there again. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I get crazy on honestly. All right, back to the point at hand. So, <clears throat> what I was originally thinking about was the gay issue. And I have been around the gay and lesbian issue my for as long as I've been an adult. Now, when I was raised, it wasn't ever spoke about. You didn't talk about sex at all. Yeah, you know, me being raised uh, where where I came from. So whenever I got to be about 20 and I moved to the first larger town that I lived in, um, I just meet everybody. I love everybody. I always have. And met gay and lesbian people and, and went, had fun with them just like I did everybody else. And some of them I didn't like and most of them I did like. And that was pretty much par for the course. But I didn't think and I was raised really 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 Christian but it was just a non-issue for me eventually um, over time I did notice that there was a big problem that that they were that the gay people were being treated really really badly and I talked to them you know I found ones that I could talk to and I questioned them and I found out that they at the same time I was uh, seeing interest in in boys that they were having interest in same sex and it was natural it was just like me it was just in a different way so to me it was it was an easy call that they were born that way it has nothing to do with them doing anything wrong but i did watch the world around them and the world around them in america anyway because i'm 57 and i was born in 1960 so by the time uh, we were smack, right smack dab in, I got to, to actually see a lot of the horrible things that happened. Um, and I was from mid-America, Christian Bible Belt, and small towns. And uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. It was really, really bad. There was a lot of suicide by young people. Uh, there was a lot of kids, a lot of people getting kicked out of their homes. Uh, there was a lot of gay bashing, a, a lot. You know, you just very seldom could could the gay people where I came from go in a group. It wasn't like the cities because there was no other person that would admit that they were gay. So if you had one person that got caught out or admitted it, usually they were on their own. And in a small town, uh, the guys would wait. Uh, they would stalk them and they would beat them up. And of course, unfortunately, I was born in Laramie, Wyoming, which is the the site of probably one of the worst torture murders of, of, of the most beautiful gay boy. Um, that is, it's extremely well known, and it was horrifying. It was horrifying, I think, to those of us who are from Wyoming, uh, let alone the whole world. But it really, um, it really made a point. And everything changed in Wyoming after that happened. Everything. Uh, there was a complete shift in the attitude after it happened. So thank you. I uh, can't remember his name. That's horrible. But he volunteered to do that to kind of make some energetic changes on the planet. So anyway, as I watched this growing up and I had my son and eventually I had my daughter, what I did not want across any, and this is way before I died, or any spiritual anything, I just didn't want my kids to judge people for the wrong reasons. I didn't want them to do that. I didn't want them to not make a friend because they didn't have the right car. I didn't want them to judge anybody because of any reason. So I started introducing them to, to all kinds of people to teach them that people are people and whether they look a different way of money, have a different belief, they still can be wonderful friends and it's worth your time to develop that friendship. 
So one of the things that I did, and really, it's when I went to nursing school, so I would have been about 32-ish, whenever that happened. And when I went to the college, uh, when I was 32, that's how recent this was. And it was a small town college. And there was not, still, there was very, very, there was no place for uh, gay people to go and mingle and be with each other. There was absolutely no place that a gay person at that time, even that most recent, you could not go in any kind of uh, small town America and hold hands or kiss each other. Can you imagine what that would be like to love somebody and not even be able to hold their hands, not be able to look? You couldn't even look lovingly at each other because there's a really good chance somebody was going to catch you and beat you up and possibly kill you. Small towns in the United States were dangerous, very dangerous, very, very, very dangerous uh, during that period of time. Now, so what I did was I met a girl who was a lesbian in, in college, and I didn't know it at the time, but she felt like in love with me, and then I found out there was another one that was in love with me. It was weird, because I didn't see it coming at all. Did not have a clue. So, yeah, so I asked her, I said, uh, please come over to the house, made friends with her, welcomed her in, and said, the only thing that I ask is if my kids ask you any questions, no matter how bizarre they might be, if you'll just kind of answer them just openly and truthfully. And so she agreed. And so she came over and kids will be kids and they ask very blatant and blunt questions, but she stayed calm and cool. Uh, I was so happy and she just answered them. And the kids were around her, and and of course she took it back to the college, and she was a very cool chick, and she pretty much passed the word that I was cool with gay people, and we had a little farm house outside of town, outside of that town, so it became it just very quickly spread that my house was like the gay hangout, hangout, and we had so much fun, and I told every single one of them that came over, I asked them the same thing, I said, you are welcome to. Uh, kiss, hug, snuggle, uh, not open sexuality, but the same thing I would I would allow between a, a heterosexual couple was allowed with any couple. And uh, I just asked them to, if my kids ask any questions, just to be, tell them the truth, which they did. So it led to some really interesting discussions. It was very good for my kids. Uh, my kids don't have a problem with really anybody now, uh, thanks to that. But, oh, we had so much fun because there was guys that would let us dress them up and put makeup on them and, and walk around the house in dresses. It was so much fun. There were so many different kinds of people. It was just great fun. We just had a lot of fun there whenever I was in, in the college there. And then, of course, I graduated to be a nurse. And this was when AIDS was horrible. It was horrible. It was killing so many people and everybody was scared so much and uh, nobody knew, you know, the meds didn't work. Uh, it was a death sentence and believe me, to die of, of AIDS during that period of time <clears throat> was horrible. It was, it, was, it was prolonged, but it was relatively fast and it was a slow, horrible death. And, um, yeah, oh, sorry. So, uh, I had a lot of friends die, a lot of friends die during that period of time. So when I met all these friends that were gay and then I became a nurse, uh, the one of the first jobs that I had was at a nursing home. And this nursing home was an older nursing home. And uh, well, after I worked, I worked a year in the hospital because that's what you're supposed to do. And then there was a secondary job as a nursing home. Eventually, I think within six months, I was the director of nursing at that place. And we had empty beds and uh, we had corporations that were not making enough money. So I told them, I said, look, let me take these empty rooms and I will rework them and make them more like little mini apartments. What, you know, a big like studio, not with a, with a bathroom and a bed, but they were much more homely than homey. And uh, let me use this for, for AIDS victims. Because what happened back during that period of time is somebody would be diagnosed with AIDS and everybody would just would freeze and run away from them. Families, friends, everybody would just dump them. They had nowhere to go. They were alone with this deadly disease and were dying. 
and they had no support at all. So the corporation finally let me do it whenever I told them I could do it with no, they didn't have to put any money for it. And I went out and called on everybody that I could get it, their attention. And I asked them to give me stuff like paint and uh, different pieces of, of um, furniture and uh, really nice um, curtains and bedding and anything to make each one of these rooms unique and homely. Home, homey to, for people and I had such a great response and people just came and I ended up getting like 10 10 or 15 of these rooms put together to uh, take in these people that didn't have any support at all and uh, of course we did and a bunch of them died and uh, it was horrible but I would, I'm just telling you this so that you can see my background with with gay people now especially with the gay men. I just want you guys to know, and this is for any of you guys that are bringing in the divine masculine, this will be important to you, that gay men specifically um, over the last, since 1940, have come in, not just being gay, but in a way to help bring the divine masculine back to the planet. And they do this by energetically bringing it with them, number one. And number two, gay men... Uh, can have nothing to do with women altogether, which means there's no attacks on the women, and that eases up that fear against the divine mask, uh, feminine. So that helps. Two, actually, there are a lot of gay men that really, really like to hang out with women, and women love to take hang out with them. I know I do. I've got a lot of gay guy friends that are just, uh, good grief, some of my best friends uh, were gay guys. So, uh, and any woman that hangs with me, you know what I'm talking about, so I won't even go there. But that's what they came to do. They came to, like, teeny tiny little ways, broke up between a bunch of them, bring back and heal some of that divine masculine whenever it was really shattered. In, and you couldn't just do any kind of blanket fixing. So they've done some little tiny changes since 1940s to correct it to get to the point where we are now where singular creator gods can really infuse a lot of energy into that corrected grid. So, uh, again, I just wanted to tell Michael that um, I am so with you. I understand. Um, I'm not gay, but I don't have any problem. I wish I was sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If, if I ran into the right woman, I, I don't think sexuality would stop me having a long-term relationship with her. I, I really don't. I don't think it, I don't think my sex, the way I look being female, I don't think that would interfere with a long-term love relationship anymore. Um, it might have at one time when I was younger, uh, where sex was more important, I guess, than it is now, uh, whereas the relationship would be more important to me now. But I was, I've had a lot of, of friends that were gay in the United States, in rural America, it was, um, man, it was, it was, there were so many people that disappeared, who got beat up, who, who got killed, and everybody knew, everybody knew that they were, that they were being killed, everybody knew uh, who the general people that were doing it, and they never got in trouble, ever. It was very, very, very horrifying. And then, of course, there's the whole Christian aspect where they just trashed him for being um, sinners and such, which was uh, so much baloney. I just couldn't get over that. I mean, these are people that were beating up people and killing them. But being gay was sinful, seriously. But they that's what they did. And it was really, really bad. It is much better now. Now the whole thing is flipped. So anyone who is trashing a gay person for any reason... Now they're looked at very badly. So just in, in since since 1940s, and really since 1970s, the whole game is switched. And a lot of that has to do with the work that uh, gay guys did. Uh, the women were a lot quieter about it uh, because it was really dangerous. Plus, the men are the ones that were the maddest about the gay issue. You know, straight men were. And straight men, I don't know if straight men won, that doesn't fantasize about two pretty chicks making out. So there was always less. <laughs> it's one thing women had. 
there was less attacks on on the the two women now the guy the ones that like my friend she was a dyke and she got more crap because she wasn't a pretty feminine you know lesbian but so the dykes got more shit and they were much more likely to be beat up but the the fems they weren't they weren't given any trouble at all as a matter of fact the guys usually wa liked watching them so it's weird weird the way humans decide what they're okay with and what they're not it's just bizarre to me so but anyway i wanted y'all to know that number one the oh, michael i wanted you guys to know that the you know this was brought on for a reason to bring back the divine masculine jeremy that energy is behind them uh that they've doing what you're doing and others you're more guys on this channel or it's just i've talked to jeremy about what he's doing so i can say his name so um <clears throat> and mostly michael i just wanted you to know that i hear you i feel you i know um i, I don't know exactly what you've been through but uh, I've been standing at a lot of people's side when they went through a lot of really, really bad things over here. So um, it is better, thanks to a lot of people doing a lot of things. And uh, so now uh, I just want to thank you for coming to this planet and bringing in that divine masculine. I love the energy when you talk. It just, uh, for me, it's just feels like a warm hug all the time. So keep on talking. And uh, just know that outside of Greece and around the world, uh, that issue, the same-sex issue has improved uh, so much. I would have never believed that this would have come this far this fast. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of really persistent gay people not giving up and not stopping until it got done. You know, there's still issues, but shoot, women have been working on their equal rights for a very long time. We need to, and, and we've still got a long ways to go on that one too. So it sometimes it just takes a while. But well done. Good job. Good job with dealing with it yourself. And uh, you're connected to some awesome people around the planet. Okay? All right, guys. Uh, I don't know how spiritual that was. But I just wanted to lend support to all of the gay people that are in my group. Speak up. We love you. And if you're not gay, we love you anyway. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for me. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.